today so let's uh let's go up here and check out this gravel and see how it did uh with uh all the rain that we got because so we got a bunch of rain man uh and see with some of the things that I, maybe i can do to make it even better all about making things better so this is big gravel though see you see how big this gravel is this is the kind of gravel that you want uh this is what they call number four gravel and just to show y'all so so that's number four gravel and that's 57 gravel so what i'm saying that's a big difference in size uh you know that big load of gravel i got last week that was all number four and actually a 57 gravel it's a mixture of number five and seven. This being five right here, and that being seven. Just to let y'all know. Uh, but down here where I'm at, most of the time, uh, unless, I mean, if you hire somebody to, to, to do your gravel driveway, they're gonna put 57 down. That's what they do. That's what they put in. See this right here all oh, see this is soft right here see all this stuff needs to settle in uh i really need to drive across it because it's it's soft right here but really what i need i think is i need me a about four tons uh you know a dump trailer load of crushing run and that's stuff uh, crushing run is almost like a powder it's 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 a step up it's a couple step ups from sand but it's this stuff just crushed down crush and you know uh so, I'm kind of, but I'm not getting so what i've been doing today uh it's beautiful now but the ground is still a little wet but uh we'll be ready to go tomorrow uh i got a few other jobs that we need to go do the kids are still in the shop uh so there's that and i uh, haven't heard anything about it so you know yeah uh but what i have here is i have this is spreadsheet of all my customers right from my software and so and so what i so what i've done is i'm going through this spreadsheet and I am, you know, going up on my on my numbers. Okay, I'm going up on something that certain people uh, I may not go up on. Uh, I, I'm looking at it from, uh, well, being the business owner, I can kind of, you know, level it out across the across the the customer base. Uh, there's 87 customers here, uh, and. Uh, out of the 87 customers 80 of them are bi-weekly okay so uh, now 87 customers does not mean 87 yards because I got multiple customers that's got multiple properties I probably got 15 customers that's got two or more properties I probably got five customers that's got 10 or 12 properties. So just because it's 87 properties or 87 customers don't mean it's just 87 properties. And uh, my rates are anywhere from $50 to, well, $450, $500. You know, it's just according to, well, it's according to the customer and, and, and the amount of grass there's a couple of properties that i do big acreage and it pays in the hundreds you know uh but but your typical lawn typical lawn is sixty dollars i got a couple of you know like you like i've said before i've got a couple couple of 50s i got two 40s but the two the 40s i went up on and they were both good with it one of them i went up twenty dollars 
So that 40 turned into a 60. And then the other one, uh, 40 turned into a 50. And I can live with that. Now there are some people that are on the, on the, that are on the uh, scale that, well, they're already at like $80. So, and so they might already be at the top of what I think they need to pay based on the time and based on a lot, just a lot of factors. And I'm not going to go into all of that. Basically, uh, uh, with the experience that I have out here, I'll raise the rates on the customers that I feel like uh, can handle it. Okay. Uh, I raise the rates on the properties that justify that or where I'm just right at my margins, you know, uh, and probably will be below the margin if I don't raise with the gas prices like they are. So, yeah. So, maybe gas will go down some. It's pretty expensive right now. Uh, and and y'all probably see me driving the Kia around. That's why I kept that Kia car. And I'm probably going to end up putting a rig on it. You know, the rig, uh, meaning the trailer hitch uh, to the frame. Uh, it'll pull that little trailer around, no problem. Uh, so that might be another thing I do. But back to the numbers. So 87 customers and uh, out of 87 customers, there are probably about 10 that I'm not going to go up on because they're already at the top of what I think. I'm going to get the ones that are on the lower end. I'm not trying to go to get the $90 properties to go to 100 unless, well, unless I think that that's what's justified. See, one of the things about being an entrepreneur and a business owner and uh, doing it for a long time is you kind of understand what you need to do to make your money, right? And you understand the customers. I know what customers that uh, can take, you know, a rate increase and not, uh, you know, freak out about it or, uh, anything like that you know and out of the 15 or so people that i have went up on and they know about it already then they're all good with it um, and the average up price is ten dollars uh, probably going to be out of this list right here there's probably going to be you know 50 or so at ten dollars and probably like 12 to 20 at $15 rate increase and then there's going to be five or six at you know $20 and then there's going to be two or three at $50 because of the fact that they're just such big properties if I'm charging you $500 and we're on the property all day long or whatever then I'm going to go up $50 just to cover my fuel because the mowers don't run on air and when you start doing 10, 12, 15 acre sites, 20 acre sites, well, the mo the gas in the mower becomes a factor. It's not a factor on the on the mom and pop lawns. It, I mean, that adds up, you know, but uh, individually, it's not really, you know, a factor as far as, uh, well, <laughs> it's gonna be a factor though, because the price of fuel going up and the mowers are not getting any better efficiency rating than they were last year. So, uh, but me going up, if I just went up on 50% of my customers, that would cover all the fuel increase that but it's costing me to get fuel. And it would also cover just the cost of living increase. Uh, so I don't feel bad about going up on the customers uh, because I've, well, I've never done it before. I and the whole time I've been in business, there are some customers still at that number that I came in with. Now, I'm going up on every one of them. Uh, so, by the numbers, you figure if you do 57 to 60 customers at a $10 increase, that's $600 more per cut over, over those properties, 60 properties at a $10 increase. That's six hundred more dollars, and then you factor in ten of them, ten more properties, which is going to put you to uh, 
70 properties, give or take, of $15. So seven times 15 is what? 95, I think, 105, something like that. So that's about a $700 increase right there. This is just the money, the extra money that I'm gonna be getting this year. So with 600 on the $10 increases, we had 700 on the $15 increases. And then uh, we got about, I don't know, 10 or so, eight, well about eight or so, they're going up $20. So we'll say 10 and that's another $200. So now we 600 on 10, 200 on the 15, 200 on the 20, and then another 200 on the 50s, because I got about four that I'm gonna go up on, $50. And uh, so, what, what, how much is that? You got 600 plus 200 plus 200, that's 1,000, plus another 200. So, By going up on the numbers that I have went through this list and done and and marked and, and got it all highlighted and everything of what of what customers that I'm going up on. And there's only about four or five that I'm not gonna go up on, something like that. Uh, and this and this is subject to change. You know, I'm not locked into nothing because I'm self-employed. I, I get to choose what jobs I want to do and what jobs I don't want to do. And I get to choose also what I'm charging. Now, with that being said, you got to make sure that you uh, don't alienate your customers when you're going up on the number. And so far it's been pretty seamless because all my customers know the price of lot living has gone up and they all know me. You know, 85% of the properties in, in these papers right here are properties that uh, I have been doing for seven, eight years or more. That's just, you know, some of them, uh, uh, you know, five years, uh, some of them just a couple years. But the vast majority of these customers I've been doing for a long time, so they know me. And if they know you and they know the work ethic, they know that I gotta make a living. Because all the ones that don't give a damn if I make a living or not, well, I ain't got them no more. I didn't got rid of them. I had to a long time ago. The 50 or so core customers that I've been on here for, you know, six, seven, eight years. I've had, I got some on here that I, that I got some in here that I've been doing for 12 or 13 years and never went up on the number because I came in high and I can, and some of them can't afford for me to go up on the number. They, well, you know, they may be able to afford, they may not be able to afford. The thing is, I gotta be conscious of that because I don't wanna lose a customer over five bucks, 10 bucks. Not, a, you know, not unless I feel that it's really justified, really warranted. And it's really warranted that I should go up on every customer I got. I could I could justify that in my head. Well, me justifying that in my head and the practicality of that is two different things. I want to uh, nurture the relationships that I have with my customers. And if they can't afford it, then I'll get it out of another customer that can. And that's how I level the playing field. I don't know if that's right, I don't know if that's wrong, I don't know. But that's how I'll level the playing field, you know. Uh, if I'm over here doing some rich folks grass for, we'll just say $100, and I go up $10, then I could apply $5 of that to somebody that ain't got no money that I can't really go up on because if I go up on them, they're you know not gonna uh, be able to afford it or whatever. And some people live on that tight of a budget, y'all. I'm just saying. Uh, but I don't want to alienate my customers. This is just my method of raising the prices and how I'm looking at it. I'm not looking at each individual job. 
I'm looking at the overall number. And my overall number is $1,200 extra dollars per cut. That's my, that's my number. Whatever I have to do to get there. Now, some people are at the top side, they can't go up on them no more because they, it just doesn't make sense from, uh, from my perspective or from their perspective. You gotta go up uh, and keeping in mind that you can only do what the market allows you to do. True enough, I should go up on everybody but I'm not. I'm just not. I don't have to. There's other ways to uh, get your money uh, without going up on the numbers, i.e. be smart with your money. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I can do to save money other than going up on customers. And when I save money, that means I'm making more money from a business standpoint. We understand that fuel's gonna cost us more than ever, right? I don't think fuel's ever been as expensive as it is right now, ever, since I've been in business in 2008. I think it's at an all-time high. But I'm not worried about it because I understand money and I understand efficiency. And all the years that I've been doing this and I'm preaching efficiency, preaching efficiency and living efficiency and uh, you know trying to be all I can be trying to you know trying to be better and better it's paying dividends now because if I was lackadaisical about you know for the last 12 or 15 years whatever uh, then I would have problems right now because I wouldn't uh, put a lot of importance on efficiency see that's the number one thing with me out here to make the most money without going up on my numbers I will do even better this year than I did last year even though gas prices went up because I went up $1,200 per cut for that rotation and so in a month's time that's $2,400 more dollars I'm not going to spend $2,400 extra dollars doing on fuel. I'm not. I know I'm not. Yeah, it's going to cost me probably an additional, uh, you know, $25 or $30 a day, whatever, you know. But I'll make that money up with two of the increases. Two of the increases uh, will, will pay for the fuel, for the for the extra fuel that I need, but uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to word it right. Two cuts at the at the at the raised number will pay for the additional fuel that I need for the week. Not a you know at, at the at the inflated fuel prices that they are, because if I do two yards and I go up. Uh, and and they're fifty dollar yards, and now they're sixty dollar yards. Then I can take instead of instead of me taking, I, I can take that extra twenty dollars and put it in fuel, and that's going to be about how much more the fuel is going to cost me. Now, if you break now, if you look at it, that's how I, I break it down. It may be a little more than that. It may be like thirty dollars. So, if I was filling my truck up for sixty dollars or eighty dollars. Now it's gonna cost me 110 to fill it up. That's $30. You can't get around that number. So, and I don't fill up every day, about every other day. We're probably at we're probably gonna be at about $80 a day in fuel, $70 to $80 a day in fuel. That's where we're gonna be. And some days maybe even a hundred. But on the days that we're running both trucks, the numbers are gonna skyrocket because of this increase and because of what? Our efficiency. That's, you know, we uh, live and breathe efficiency, y'all. And uh, 
you got to run a tight ship to begin with. You got to run a tight ship as far as efficiency goes. When if gas prices were a dollar a gallon, I'm still going to be just as efficient as I as I am when they're five dollars a gallon, because I'm trained like that. I've run the business like that the whole time. I don't know any other way. So my expenses are going to be down everywhere else. Now. To all the guys that said, hey, man, you know, and this is all relative. To all the guys that say, hey, man, and nothing, I'm not digging on nobody. But to all the guys that said, hey, man, just buy another deck for that lawnmower. You see, that three grand that I saved right there, that's how I think. Because that three grand, no matter how you look at it, is going to come out of the business pot. It is. Worst case scenario, I, uh, I can take that three grand that I did save and I can apply it to the increased fuel prices and still be doing good. You multiply being efficient, you multiply the price increase of $2,400 a month and you add in the fact that you can fix a lot of your own stuff if you're thinking about what you're doing the gas prices are not going to break you not if you're me they're not no way because i think the same it doesn't matter i'm going to be as efficient and as as skinny as i can be in this business now you don't learn that in a year or two and there's always something that can happen. A mower could go down. Well, good thing I got other mowers. There's a lot that can happen out here that could that, that could that could really make it where the gas prices are the are 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 the hook shot that knocked you out. To me, the gas prices are concerning. Don't get me wrong. And it's something that, I, that, that I'm going to have to deal with, just like everybody else, right? But it's not detrimental to my business. Now, if it goes up to $10, well, I'll probably be preaching a whole other story then. I will be. But, it, but, but at that point, then, 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 you know, everybody's going to be out of business. You know, people are not even going to be able to afford to go to work. So, there's that. Other ways that I save money, okay? I don't drink the energy drinks no more. That's three fifty a day, right there by itself. It is. That's you know what? Seven days a week, twenty five bucks a week. Add that onto that twenty four hundred per month, and that's another hundred dollars that I'm saving. There are ways, y'all, that though the gas prices are concerning, there are ways that you guys, me included, can streamline, cut, knock down just a little bit on what things cost us, and the gas prices uh, will not be as detrimental. Of course, it's gonna affect my business, of course, because I won't be I won't be able to make as much money as I would if the gas prices were 250 a gallon, right? But I'm nowhere near going to go out of business because of it. Not even close. It ain't even. I mean, I mean, it's not a factor uh, as far as that goes. Considering I'm going that I went up on the numbers and going up on the numbers, going up on the efficiency. And, uh, and minimizing my expenses by fixing my own stuff pays dividends for me right now, y'all. And it be for you, too. And I know a lot of you guys say, well, damn, Ray, that damn mower date was three months ago. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, three grand stayed in the bank that would have otherwise got spent. However you want to look at it, it doesn't matter. So this is just kind of the, some of the food for thought 
that I'm thinking about as these gas prices creep up to five bucks a gallon. You know, the biggest thing I'm concerned about ain't $10 a gallon, it's the supply running out like it did last year. See, that's my biggest, that's my biggest fear because with that unavailability, well, that'll put me out of business. But that'll put me on the sideline until it's available again. But if gas is unavailable, it's gonna put everybody out of business. It ain't gonna matter because ain't nobody gonna be able to pay you to do their yard because they're not gonna be able to go to work. So yeah, uh, so that's just some food for thought and not saying that the way I'm doing things is the right way to do things or, or not. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's just some of, the, some of my thoughts on how we can save money at every point because we can't control the gas. We can't control what the gas prices are, you know. And, you know, uh, I was over in uh, DLT's live the other day where he was yesterday or day before yesterday under one of my other YouTube names. Y'all know, man. And he was, he was ranting about the gas prices. And, you know, and I said, well, you know, the gas prices are what they are. There's really nothing we can do about it. And that's really how I feel. There's really nothing I can do about the gas prices, right? I mean, what? tell me what I can do about it. And he went, he was saying, well, people ought to be doing videos over, uh, over the gas prices. I said, well, what's there to, what, 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 what kind of video are you going to do? You know, I mean, you can't stop the gas prices from going up. You can write your congressman all you want, but that ain't going to stop the gas prices. I mean, what? Tell me what you... He got mad and he ended up blocking my alias. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all. So, when God was asked, I said, well, what kind of video will people do that you want them to do to help with the gas prices? What he wants to do is he just wants to... He All he wants to do is... Uh, whine and cry about it and you know there's nothing we can do about the gas prices i can't i can't you know i can write my congressman all i want but they ain't doing nothing they paying five dollars a gallon too you know what we got to do is take control of what we can control meaning i can control my my numbers by going up on the prices i can I, i'm in control of my numbers going up on the prices. I'm in control of my efficiency when I'm out here on the road burning that gas. And I can also uh, minimize my expenses. So that's where I'm coming from. I'm not finna fight the government over the fuel. Sorry, man, that's just not, I don't wanna pay $5 a gallon no more than anybody else does. But I can't get too, just just me personally, I can't get too wrapped up into that. What I have to do is I have to adapt at this point. Now, if it goes up to $10, well, I'll have to adapt at that point too, whatever that may be at that point in time. And I guess it could go up the, uh, up that high, you know. But, uh, but you can only control what you can control. And everything else is just noise because you can't control it anyway. You see, I just told y'all how I'm dealing with the gas prices and three or four different ways that I'm dealing with the gas prices. Things that are tangible, things that are doable, things that I know is gonna work, right? So, I mean, if the gas prices, hell, if the gas prices go up to $8 a gallon, then I ain't gonna like it for sure, but I can survive that. I know I can, because I adapt. And by me going up on these numbers, well, and minimizing everything on the other end, then uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be all right. And if you guys are that are out there that are in this game full time and have been doing it a while, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're young in this game, well, you be, you're gonna have to put on your learning boots quick 
because uh, it's going to be, it, it might be, and you're, you know, it might be very difficult for you, more difficult than it is for somebody like me or some of the other guys that have been doing it a long time. Not how about big they are or how big their business is, but by the experience they have on ways to make top dollar. Me living the life of trying to make top dollar readies my brain for this kind of gas thing and, 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 and all that. For, you know, never thinking, well, it's good enough. That's good enough. Mm -mm. I'm an overachiever, man. To make top dollar out here, you gotta be an overachiever too. And when these obstacles get in our way, gas prices, government politics, and blah, 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 that affect our bottom dollar, we best, we best be efficient all along the way. So when that does happen, you're as prepared as you can be. I can't focus on trying to, to uh, petition the government to lower the gas prices. They know I want a lower gas price. They know that. I ain't got to tell them that. I'm just saying. I need to focus on what I can do to keep my keep me and my family fed, <laughs> to keep my uh, all of my uh, things going on, uh, to where I don't lose uh, what I'm working so hard for, because of things I can't control. The gas prices are crazy expensive. I get it, but I'm about as in control of the gas prices as I am of the weather. So, and I'm ready for all that too. I'm always ready for the weather. I'm always preparing for the weather. Cause I want to make top dollar out here. I ain't trying to get by, get by. Y'all know that. But some people want to rant and rave about the fuel prices. I could do that, right? On a slow news day. But the reality is I can't change it. I'm going to have to pay it just like y'all. The reality is we're fixing to go into the season and the gas is at an all time high and I need to be preparing for that. And so do you. And we can hate the government, hate the police, hate this and hate that. None of that is all that's noise. We gotta prepare our business for what's the what 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 is coming down the pipe. And in this and in this case, right now, as I speak right now, the fuel prices are probably uh, the number one thing right now that's affecting that will affect this type of business. So that's just some of the things I do. Uh, Y'all can put that in your pipe and smoke on it uh, or not, don't matter. Cause I'm gonna do what I gotta do for me and my family. And I hope you guys do what you gotta do for you and your family. And that ain't crying about it all the damn time. And that ain't, you know, blaming whatever. Just go out there and make a little more money. That's what you need to do. That's what I'm gonna do to cover these unforeseen things that I live my life doing anyway. I live my life preparing for unforeseen issues that come down the pipe. So I'm always ready, man. As well, I'm as, always as ready as I can be. So y'all know what it is. It's Ray. And I love me some me, y'all. Peace out.